that stuff. Community Rescue Mission is an amazing place to work for. So I want to talk a little bit about what Community Rescue Mission is, who we are, what we do, and um, then we'll talk about some of our programs. Then I will talk about the rules of volunteers, what our expectations are. Um, then we're going to get mobile and do a tour. And you're going to hear the message. And hopefully I'll have covered all of the things that you would want to ask by the end of it. And if not, please ask any questions in the middle afterwards for Q&A. My goal is to get out of here even before 7.30. Anybody want to back home? <laughs> so, the problem is I'm a little sleepy. I've been working hard today. And sometimes my filter is lower, so I talk too much. So we'll really work hard on that. Yeah. So Union Rescue Mission has been in existence for over 128 years. Mm. That's a long time. <laughs> and Skid Row was what it is now. It's not exactly. But that is for people who were experiencing homelessness would congregate. Good row. And addiction was a serious problem then, as addiction is now. And interesting, the addiction of choice was usually alcohol. Um, and we have pictures downtown. I wish we had one here. Next time I'm going to have a slideshow. It'll be much more interesting. Um, but you won't be here. You have already done that. There's a picture of our first way we began uh, serving the people of Skid Row. Uh, we didn't have a building at the time. There was a wagon. And it was filled with uh, food, clothing, beverages, um, all of the sorts, uh, clothing, and preachers. They would take the gospel away, fill it up, take it down to Skid Row. And food would be handed out, and clothes would be handed out, and preachers would preach, and people would be cared for. And sometimes people's lives would change. And um, they would leave. Or they'd change, and then they'd relapse. Because what we know now that we didn't know so much then was addiction is really strong and it's really hard to get over. So um, what they would call it when people would uh, relapse and come into the wagon is they call it they fall off the wagon. If you've ever heard that phrase before, legit, it started at Union Rescue Mission. Good work. Now you've got a fun story at the next party you get to. <laughs> I know that phrase started. You don't have to credit me. <laughs> so yeah, we were established in 1891. The population, uh, so just imagine an old school wagon or a strong wagon, wheels and all those up old wheels. And the crowd around it, there's a picture in downtown. And the population in that picture is pretty much entirely male. And pretty much entirely white men. They'd come out west with big dreams like so many people did. Uh, gonna make a red chili! <laughs> and people still try. <laughs> and people still come out. They think, I'm gonna make a red chili! Uh, and then they found out that, you know, jobs weren't as easy to come by as they thought, or the opportunities weren't as, you know, dropping off the fruit trees like they were told. Um, or it wasn't as easy to break into the industry as they had dreamed. And so they felt shame and didn't know what to do. So to cover their pain, they would turn. So that was the story of Skid Row in 1891. We established Union Rescue Mission and our, I'm gonna give you our three word mission statement, because there's the long one there, it says our mission, and it's long. Um, it's important words, all good words, but the easier one to remember is literally just three words. The way of the home. I'm going to say it again, and then I'm going to make you say it. 
The way home. All right, now count of three. One, two, three. The, the way, way is home. home. My friend Alfredo wants to say, oh, yeah. Sorry, Alfredo, I left it up. Uh, it has been a long day, but maybe like two minutes or so. Who, who's calling for me? space here downtown. Families that live on our family floor have to share four or five families a room. Uh, but here it's their own room and um, there's a small fridge, no hot plates, um, bathroom, full, full bath facility, uh, and bunks and beds. If they have a lot of kids, like up to seven, eight kids, we have some families that large, then we do have some that have adjoining rooms. And so the older kids sleep in the other room. Uh, and so, you know, we are exclusively for single mothers. Um, let's walk up this way. We do have single fathers at our downtown site, and we do have plans in place for um, a new building. We're gonna bring Brad, we're hoping in November. And uh, the new facility is in South LA, and it's going to be uh, for families, single dad, single 
month impact families. So um, since that is a huge need in Los Angeles, is family affordable housing. Is that in addition to the pre-existing? You're not breaking that, they're not transferring the whole no. the business. Yeah, 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 yeah. We we will we will as long as there's people in Skid Row, we will never close down. How close is that room to it's about a 15 to 30 minute drive depending on the time oh, wow. of the day. Okay. <laughs> um, this here is our child care uh, facility. It's locked right now so I can't take you inside. Beautiful facility. It is not a licensed daycare but we do have our child care coordinator who is expert. She's incredible. Uh, let's let's move away uh, a little closer here so again there's a path. Um, this facility is so sweet. I actually was a children's pastor for many years in a fairly uh, upper middle class suburban church. Our facility here is nicer than what our kids there had. And I'm so proud of that because a lot of people think that people who are coming from disadvantage, like, oh, they're not fussy, just give them the bare minimum. And what I prefer is give them the best and have them taste and see how awesome it is. Now we didn't use our own donors money to pay for the best, but there are corporations like this space, it's called Bright Space, it was funded by Universal Studios Hollywood. And so, you know, if Universal Studios wants to give us the resources to redesign our space, we'll say thank you. We'll do that, absolutely. This over here is obviously our little children's playground, just nice and handy right across the hall. And this U-shaped building here is called the Oaks, and it is going to be, hi ladies, <laughs> sorry about having your room tonight, thank you. We are about to launch this, we are, it was actually supposed to be a hard launch today that this space would be open. Unfortunately, we had air conditioning problems. And so inspectors won't let us open the space without that being finalized. What's going to be in here is after school program rooms, tutoring rooms, there's a library, there's a youth room, uh, there's kid play rooms for lower elementary, upper elementary, and there's conference rooms uh, and space for 15 more families. So we have been anxiously awaiting the opening of this place for over a year and a half, to be honest. And again, generously provided by NBC Universal. Um, also, Kelly Clarkson herself. She actually uh, filmed a, a pilot for a TV show on the rooftop at Union Rescue Mission. And then she dropped us a check for $45,000. I mean, I don't want to just brag on people who give a lot of money because every, every act of generosity is amazing. Um, but a lot of people... Uh, no, we got... Oh! I say, yeah! You saved me! You saved me! You saved, me. You saved you. My goodness! Where's, where's your mama? Where's your girl? Oh, careful! There she is! That's sorry, oh, it's okay, Maria! It's okay! He's so fun! That little boy, I first met him when they were living in Skid Row. And they were on the fourth floor uh, in the downtown center. I have seen so much transformation in that little boy. Because of the chaos that happens in life when you are experiencing homelessness can be so disorienting, but it comes out with the little ones and different behaviors. And so it's easy to get mad at a kid for behaving in a certain way. But when you see what coming to stability structure provides, you recognize how critical those basic needs are for every human. How much peace we get just from having order in our lives. All right, let's move up.
before we got not rudely but politely interrupted was that our mission statement is three words the way home repeat after me at the count of three one two three the way home. Home. so we don't want to be permanent home to anybody that's not what we're in the business of. we're not developers <laughs> we're not trying to make affordable housing here um, but it's the gap to help resolve the issues that have led to the fact that this family is experiencing homelessness. So we're that gap. While they're here, they don't pay rent. They pay a program fee, a portion of which 15% every month is saved. Uh, we've got accounts downtown. Every mom here has an account and their money is saved. So when they leave here two, three, sometimes four years, they get a money order for the whole bunch of money. Enough for a damage deposit. And maybe more. Um, so we help people find their way home. We are only permanent dwelling for two groups of people. One wing at the downtown site on the fifth floor are our ambassadors. Those are our gentlemen who have graduated from our downtown program that's the CLDP program that's the intensive recovery program for men downtown if they've graduated and due to maybe age or disability it would be unkind to expect that they'd be able to go out and find a sustainable wage job so they are allowed to stay at fifth floor ambassador's wing for as long as they want they are required to give 20 hours a week of volunteer service uh, they do pay rent that's the only rental but if they can't if they don't have funds we figure it out okay so there's a permanent wing there we have a permanent lodge up here called Sequoia same story women who graduated from our program but due to age or circumstances it is impossible for them to be able to sustain a wage that would pay rent so they stay um, again there's only 25 there's 22 men downtown 25 here for the population of women here we have about 73 not about but we we're, <laughs> we do have exactly 73 moms right now um, we have 147 children it's a lot of kids here, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's summertime now, and boy, do we know it's summer. <laughs> Actually, today was the first day of our programming for summer. So we have a day camp, basically, from uh, first grade to 12th grade. Mm. And so uh, we have volunteer groups that come through here and help us plan uh, activities and events and whatnot. But yeah, so I think our current youngest is seven months old. Our current oldest child is over 18. Usually at 18, like downtown, that, that's done. They can't stay with mom anymore. But here's a different place, right? The, the kid is in college. Mm. So, what? We're going to kick him out? I don't think so. <laughs> so, um, yeah. 
Hope Gardens is an incredible place. Um, we have a list of core values that I would like you to read. What I want to make sure we're all clear on is Union Rescue Mission is a faith-based organization. I don't want anybody to be surprised by that. Uh, if you walk through our halls downtown or through the halls here, you'll see scripture all over. Our focus is Judeo-Christian. That's our, that's our faith. But I want to be clear about this as well. The only people required to sign our statement of faith, to say that you agree with our statement of faith, are paid staff. Also, if you're teaching. <laughs> if you are teaching in our program, then you have to agree with our statement of faith. Nobody else has to. And I want to emphasize, our guests don't have to sign on to our statement of faith. You don't have to say, yes, I believe, in order to get a meal. You don't have to say, yes, I believe, in order to get a room. That is not how we roll. Um, and you guys don't have to say, I agree. I just ask, if you come from a different faith perspective, or no faith perspective, please don't try to convince people here of your opinions. That's all I ask, all right? So just respect that this is how we roll, and we're not gonna change. We're happy to have you here and roll with us. You don't have to agree with us to do things like cut vegetables, right? All right, uh, and if you have any questions about that, because I have confused people with that statement before, you please follow up with me afterwards or send me an email. I'd love to clarify, but please, you are welcome to serve here no matter what you think <laughs> about Jesus. <laughs> All right, um, I, being a staff member, I believe in Jesus. Um, but our core values that are on the page there, and again, I'm not going to insult you by reading through them, because you guys are readers, and you can do that. Um, but I want to just summarize our approach to how we serve. The first three words, four words. Hi. 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 How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, thank you. So if you could find your name on this list and check off. And if you are interested in doing child care, put BC. That stands for background check. And then is it all right if you guys share the Found us. <laughs> yeah, <we're very> <laughs> Good. All right. Um, so we can play catch up later. Catch up. Um, somebody remind me where we were. Core values. values. Thank you. Um, so you can read them in the manual, but I want to just touch on the first four words of our extended. Um, mission statement with the compassion of Christ okay so no matter what you believe about Jesus the fact that there was a historical figure named Jesus Christ that lived the planet uh, there's more evidence for Jesus by the way than there is for William Shakespeare so if you believe William Shakespeare is a real human I think you can probably agree that Jesus was and that he was known as a compassionate person that's just bottom line at least that okay so, um, I was just talking about how we are faith-based, but we don't force our volunteers to agree. We just ask that you not argue with us. <laughs> uh, yes? Yeah. Absolutely, my love. Um, probably the best one to go to, and if you could walk with her, is back down at the administration building that we were just standing in front of. There should be somebody at the front desk. Just say, could you tell me where the restroom is? And she'll put you. Okay. Thank you so much. I am so worried about that. I usually remember. Oh, that was my Canadian story. I just said. Um, anybody else in the restroom? Okay. Miserable feeling. Um, so with the compassion of Christ, that is my uh, kind of measuring tool about how I treat people. I, I don't always succeed. I sometimes fail. But my uh, standard actually goes like kind of more basic in um, early scripture. And again, you don't have to agree with it, but um, in my perspective, every human was made in the image of God. So if that's true, if I believe that's true, that's going to affect how I interact with you, right? Like if I believe that you are made in the image of God, 
I am much less likely to treat you with disrespect. I am much less likely to treat you with anger or harm or ill intent. So, even if you don't believe in the God of the creator of the universe, just thinking of the fact that somebody holds value as a human, regardless of where they are, regardless of their life circumstance, that is irrelevant. It doesn't matter where they're living, it doesn't matter what they've smoked, <laughs> what they've put in their body, they still have value. That's how I like our guests to be treated. And as volunteers, I ask you, when you interact with our guests, and you will, if you're volunteering in the kitchen of uh, some of our staff, former guests, you know, in the kitchen, you might serve people over the counter. You're interacting with our guests. Please treat them with kindness. Please treat them with respect. Please treat them with dignity. And my favorite thing to talk about is please. I, here, just honest, I come to life with assumptions. You know, I, I, I was taught things growing up. And so I have some assumptions about why people are experiencing homelessness. I just ask that whatever assumptions you have about why people are in this situation, would you try to take them off? Pretend it's like a backpack. And when you come to serve here, try to take that backpack off. And try to live like you don't know why people are here. Because when you're interacting, there's as many stories about why people are experiencing homelessness and therefore needing our services as there are people living here. We have 72 moms. Every one of them has a unique and individual story. Some are domestic violence survivors. Some, yes, were addicted. But my question to them is, so were you using drugs first or did you become homeless? And then to numb yourself from the chaos, did you start using drugs? The answer for some is one, for some the other. Every story is unique, so please treat each one here like they're a unique human being <laughs> and that they each have a story. Like I would like to treat you each as unique human beings. All right, so that's, that's my, my most important words about how to treat our guests. You can read the, the rules um, or, 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 excuse me, for values. Your own time. Page five through, let's see, it's like seven, eight, nine, is our list of programs. So follow along with me so it's not boring. Yep, oh, yes. Good. Thank you for asking. Simon, we have Yeah, are you guys, are you sure? I do have a whole bunch of copies. I made a whole bunch because um, 32 people signed up. So I got like lots and lots of copies. Here, sure. There go. One moment. Anybody else need a copy? I usually have an apprentice who is helping me doing all these things. Mm -hmm. But our my apprentice is a graduate of our program. And she has a baby mm. who's 18 months old. And they're in their room. <laughs> Our Saturday orientation works a little bit better for her than a Monday night. All right, so page five. These are our programs available. As some of these are at Union Rescue Mission and some of these are here. So I will start with the Life Transformation Program. So this was like the core. Like I said, for those of you who were here, Union Rescue Mission has been around for 128 years, 129 years, long time. And for the first hundred years, it was men in downtown Skid Row. Mm -hmm. So we are experts at helping men. <laughs> we've done it for a long time. It's not perfect, but we've done it well for a long time. So our intensive recovery program is called the Christian Life Discipleship Program. And listed are the classes we have. Now, this is a self-selecting program. We don't force anybody into recovery because that doesn't work. <laughs> so, but some of our men in that program 
We're given a choice in court. Jail or a recovery program. And they wisely chose recovery. So um, they submit to our program. Now that group, the people in recovery, just like the women here in our phases, they aren't forced to agree with our statement of faith, but they know we do have requirements. They do attend chapel. They do have a, a chaplain. They do, like there is a spiritual element. It's a four, um, it's a holistic program, spiritual, mental, we have an educational program, uh, physical, we have PE requirements, one hour working out a day, and uh, educational, spiritual, oh, work, work therapy. They are required to work. And for some of them, it's the first time they've worked in 40 years. Mm. <laughs> and so it's hard. <laughs> Because they're expected to arrive on time and be ready to work and work 20 hours on top of everything else that they have to do. And that's part of their therapy because they need to relearn regular routines. So all of this stuff is available and it's amazing. Um, we've got the requirements there. We've got Biblical 12-step program, devotions, all of that. So flip over to page six. Um, so the goal is that they remain drug and alcohol free. So people ask, so what if they relapse? You kick them out, right? No, we don't. Because what we've learned is recovery is hard. Relapse is common. It's almost to be expected. So it's not one and done. You did it, you're out. If a relapse happens, there's a consequence. So the men in the recovery program live on the third floor at Union Rescue Mission. They share a room with about six men, six to eight men. If they are found to have a dirty test, they've tested positive for drug use, they are uh, kindly told they must go to our second floor, which is our gateway program. There they are sharing a room with 299 other men. Mm. Guess which they prefer. <laughs> Usually it doesn't take too many of those consequences to say, no, really, it's not worth it. But there are people who choose to just fully relapse, and it happens. Because you can't force recovery. All right. After our CLDP people have graduated, they then are in a, an apprentice program. So our apprentice program is it's designed to be about six months. Sometimes they, they're given extensions. But again, it's after they've gone through the program, so they've had the routine of their classes, the routine of work therapy, and they're learning how to do all of that, but sometimes they're not job ready yet. So we offer positions at Union Rescue Mission for them to develop their job skills again. All right, so we have apprentices in our development office. We have apprentices in our volunteer services offices. Like just, Think of a department, we probably have an apprentice. A lot of apprentices in our driving uh, transportation department, in our warehouse. So apprentices are learning, relearning again, those job skills. So important. And it's a really, it's a mentoring time. So those of us who are staff who have an apprentice, we get to mentor these amazing humans who have overcome so much. Um, and then there's a transitional living program, three months. So. After they've found employment, they have three months where they're just kind of, again, saving more money, getting used to making a decent paycheck and not going crazy with the decent paycheck, right? Like sometimes it's like, wow, new income. Wow, what am I gonna do with all this money? <laughs> all right, let's learn how to uh, pace ourselves. Okay, now Hope Gardens, that's here. That's where we are. Our Hope Gardens family program are, um, our women enter a four, there's four phases. Phase one is, uh, it's not written here this clearly. Phase one is acclimatizing to the community. Because when you have this many people living in community, you need to learn how to do it. <laughs> it's complex. Anybody who's ever lived on a you know college dorm campus, you know how hard it is to live in community. Well, add recovery issues and uh, trauma backgrounds <laughs> and you, you can imagine sometimes it takes a long time to adjust and so we don't rush people into phase two we let them kind of get their rhythm in phase one then phase two is their course program 
So that's, I mentioned, outside of Concord over there, that our courses are, we've got life skills education is our focus, not education. So life skills um, and spiritual practices, that's part of it as well. And we have, like I said, two, excuse me, two semesters, 18 weeks each. Parenting is included in that. Financial man management is included in that. All of the skills that you need to reacquire um, or acquire. Um, we have case managers for every one of our moms. It's during phase one, that's when they're assigned their case manager. And that's the person who helps walk them through their issues, uh, who helps identify budget, uh, what their needs are, and what has caused them to experience homelessness. Um, they get free daily meals, access to medical and dental care, that's downtown, so we have a shuttle uh, that twice a day goes to downtown, and then we also have a shuttle, that shuttle that just drove by once an hour, uh, that shuttle takes our moms to five different stops in summer. Grocery store, bank, clothing, so different places so they can access the community if they don't have a car. We also have a youth program here. Like I said, we've got a lot of a lot of kids, and so we have a child care coordinator and a youth director, and both are critical roles here. Critical roles here, and both uh, are very. Um, both of our leaders in those departments are looking for quality people to mentor their kids. Uh, but they're fussy, not gonna lie. They, uh, they'll want to interview you if you want to spend time regularly with their kids. Uh, they're very protective because they love their kids a lot. Uh, then our senior care program, as I mentioned. Okay, page eight covers our clinics. We have a lot of partners. We could not do this on our own because we would not be able to pay all the staff to do all these things. UCLA School of Nurse Practitioners offers a clinic downtown and our people here can access it as well. So, uh, now a lot of people who have medical background want to go and volunteer down there. Sorry, it's part of the School of Nurse Practitioners. <laughs> you have to be in the UCLA School of Nurse Practitioners to work in our clinic. Um, but it's an incredible service that we have and that is open to anybody in Skid Row. Anybody who needs medical attention can go there. Doesn't have to be a guest. Just want to be clear. USC School of Dentistry, it's in the same hallway, so my favorite joke down there is like, oh, look at that, it's a miracle. <laughs> miracle on Skid Row, we've got USC and UCLA working together. It's amazing. So uh, USC School of Dentistry offering dental care to uh, people in our programs, and that is a referral-based program, so that's not available en masse, because dental work, as you know, is so costly. We also have uh, mental health support. Uh, again, we couldn't pay enough counselors to do all of the counseling that needs to be done. So Pepperdine, uh, their uh, students in the um, Marriage and Family Therapy program, their master's program out in Pepperdine, uh, they send interns downtown and here. And uh, they have appointments and they're supervised and their supervision conferences about their work and they help with the mental and emotional support um, that our guests require. We also have a Pepperdine Law School offering legal aid, which is a critical need in our community. Um, a lot of our moms have a lot of legal issues, and uh, actually, some of our moms come here having their kids already have been removed because I don't know if you know that it is actually illegal, it is against the law to have your child unsheltered. Mm -hmm. uh, so moms try to hide in their cars or hide where they are with their kids because they want to keep their kids with them. But sometimes it's found out at school or other places uh, that they are experiencing homelessness and then the children are removed. And so what we have provided for many moms is enough stability and support that DCFS then comes and assesses the situation and after a series of meetings and assessments and court dates, children return to their moms. And uh, it's pretty powerful on those days. All right, we have a learning center that's in downtown campus. It's a gorgeous learning center. I hope you get a chance to see it sometime. Uh, we have, uh, um, LAUSD certified teachers 
who help our men in our program downtown uh, actually bring themselves up to appropriate um, high school diploma levels. We don't have the same here. Uh, here, after they're done their phase two, when they're in phase three, uh, that's apprentice program here is phase three. Uh, they can also go off site and get uh, college training and or GED off site. So we use our community services here. All right, I will not read through uh, page 10 and following um, because understanding homelessness in LA, some of these are old stats to be honest. Um, I'm just gonna say the simple thing. There are a lot of myths out there that people believe about what is causing homelessness. To be honest, the biggest problem right now in Los Angeles, and I'm not surprising anyone in the room, I say, lack of affordable housing. Mm -hmm. The number of moms or families who were literally bought out by a developer, given cash, you know, hey, here's cash, here's your cash buyout, you can go find another place, but they were paying $1,500 a month for two bedroom, one bath, with their seven children. Mm. They can't find a landlord who will A, take them, B, come even close. For the right, the privilege of living on Skid Row, downtown women's center right beside it is a new luxury loft building. One bedroom, one bath, one apartment, five thousand dollars a month affordable housing is a problem lack thereof um, a lot of people have addiction who aren't homeless so it's not just about addiction um, let's go all the way to the volunteer program it's on page 12 if you do have any questions about homelessness though, um, I'm not a really huge expert, but my husband is. <laughs> my husband has been working in homeless services for over 20 years. So just hanging out with him for 18 of those, uh, I've learned a lot, uh, 19 I guess. Um, I've learned a lot and so I love to talk about the issues of people facing homelessness. So I, I can do what I can to answer questions and if I don't know, I know who to ask. <laughs> um, so I think we all know what a volunteer is, right? Like, do I, do I have to say out loud, we don't pay you? <laughs> <laughs> but apparently it's on the paper, so just to be clear, we can't pay you for what you're doing. Um, we do groups. So if you have people that you want to bring along, you don't have to say, okay, so you have to go to the next orientation. If you have a group you want to bring, you can say, hey, Shirley, <laughs> can I bring a group? How does this day? Oh, sorry, we already got a group that day, but what about this day? Okay, let's do it. Okay, you bring them, and then I will do orientation for them for the first half hour, and then release them to serve. Okay, we do that for church groups, student groups, tons of schools come through here. So if you want a school that you're connected to to be participating, we love doing school groups. Um, corporations come, like I said, NBC Universal. We had uh, Blue Shield of California here in May. All sorts of uh, groups come and volunteer with us. And we try to make that as um, simple as possible. Um, the screening process, you have to attend orientation. Thank you, check. You're here, well done. You have to adhere, agree to adhere to our guidelines as listed in this handbook. Hope you're okay with that <laughs> uh, all of y'all signed up on our uh, website right to be here so you've already agreed to these things hopefully that that's what you did there <laughs> okay um, and then it says here you schedule and confirm volunteer dates and times with volunteer coordinator new fresh off the press no it's not that new it actually we should, should have changed this a lot of our volunteer opportunities are now on that volunteer portal that you registered to do this. So once my assistant, apprentice, and I have a moment tomorrow or Wednesday <laughs> to check your volunteer profile and move it from not attended to having attended orientation, 
you then will have an access to a plethora of opportunities that'll just pop up on the screen. You'll go, what? Uh, so there's meal service downtown, meal service here, child care downtown, child care here. Um, again, if child care, you have to get the background check before we'll let you go. Um, so all sorts of opportunities, warehouse, our thrift store in West Covina, all sorts of service opportunities. But if there's something you are burning with passion to do and it's not listed, call me, email me. I would love to talk about it. Um, I love creativity ideas, just get all crazy about it. So that'd be so fun. Um, our code of contact, conduct again you are able to read and hopefully you didn't just click I agree hopefully you read <laughs> but I am just gonna really emphasize our key critical ones that you might not understand why but I beg you to follow um, first no photos ever of our guests here I think it's obvious if there's uh, survivors of domestic violence or children are under protection, literally you could be risking their lives. It's not a joke. It's not life or it's, it's an important role. Also, there's people I know downtown who their families don't know they're homeless or experiencing homelessness, forgive me. So there was a woman, she's a truck driver, full-time job. She stays in our gateway program, that's our second floor. For the women's room, there's 120 bunks, so 240 women. And for the men, 150 bunks, so 300 men. She can't afford to rent an apartment here. Her son, she's from Texas, but her son got into Cal State Northridge, so she wanted to be out here close to her son while he's at school. Her parents live in Texas. They don't know she's living at a shelter. Her son doesn't know she's living in a shelter. It's her story to tell. It's not our story to tell. Mm. Um, so that's why no pictures. If you're there with a group, you know, or you're in there with staff and you want to take a picture with our staff, by all means, our, some of our staff like really got excited about having pictures with volunteers. <laughs> so that's okay. Just no guests can be in the po photo. Um, you're not supposed to fraternize with our mission guests. What does that mean? Well, it means no dating. <laughs> you can't date one of our guests. Uh, but not just dates. You cannot share contact information. You can't say, hey, we just had such an amazing connection here. Here's my cell phone number. That feels unnatural sometimes because the people here are amazing absolutely amazing and you'll want to be friends and you'll want to get in touch sorry until they're graduated and out and off campus you have to go through us it's for your safety it's for their safety trust me on this it might sound cruel if it's awkward they want to friend you on Facebook or follow you on Instagram and it's awkward for you to say no you need to practice saying no boundaries are healthy but if you have to, use me. The volunteer lady surely said, I can't. Again, it's for your protection. Also, equally as important, no gifts. You cannot, and that, that includes, oh, here's a lip balm. I bought it for you, thought you'd like it. Mm. No gifts. Because this is what happens when people bring gifts to individuals here. Do you know what happens? Fight. Mm. Right? Mm. How did you get that? How did you get that? How come? Mm. So we work really hard to make sure gifts are distributed evenly. Mm. Or by merit or by whatever. But that's the staff's job, not yours. Mm -hmm. um, clothing. When you come to volunteer, uh, clothes to shoes only. Long pants only. Covering shoulders. Mostly those are safety issues for like if you're in the kitchen, um, but it's also a modesty issue. Um, also, yeah, nothing on a t-shirt that supports drug use or alcohol brands. 
Uh, and nothing violent. Um, those are all just important practices in our opinion. Uh, so come ready to serve. Ages, by the way, in the kitchen, you have to be 14 years or older here on this campus. Uh, in the kitchen downtown, 16 is their preferred age. Again, that's a safety issue. Uh, people using knives um, and our staff can't be constantly monitoring to make sure people are not going to hurt themselves. Um, our child care is also, you have to be 14 years old or older to work in our child care in our PEEPs. Um, you 16 or older to work with infants. And then that there's a whole other subset of rules connected to child care that I can discuss offline if um, or when you come to work with our kids. Um, so you're like, so I have my kids here, what can we do? Lots. <laughs> we'll work it out. All right. Um, I love working with kids and giving them opportunities to serve, especially here. I get a little more distress at downtown. That's a little more complicated. Um, but we do ask that if you bring a child that's under, uh, I think it's 10 and under, you must stay with your child at all times. Your child must stay with you. Um, we're not responsible for loss of damage to you or anything you own. Uh, things like wearing jewelry, like you can, but know that if you have a pretty nice piece of bling, somebody notice it, they'll talk about it, and maybe that's a temptation for them, and maybe it's just better to just leave it home. Um, ah yes, here's the last one on page 13 there. I just ask that you accept our guests as they are. Because you don't know what happened to them this morning. Mm. You don't know what happened to them last night. And you might, if you see our kids, you might hear a pretty wild world coming out of a three-year-old body. Don't judge them. And please don't try to correct them. As a volunteer, you are not here to teach. You are here to care for them to support and value them as humans. Please trust that our team is aware of the educational needs and the developmental needs of our community and our staff and team are working with the parents and with the children. So I take the pressure off of you to manage behavior. Now, if something happens while you're interacting and you see safety is at risk, guess what? You can intervene, okay? Safety always trumps, oops. Uh, <laughs> safety always <laughs> is the first rule. Safety first. But besides safety, uh, if there's behavior that makes you uncomfortable, hold those feelings and come talk to me later. And we can process that together. Because I care about you and how you feel about those interactions. Because I was a pastor for many years. So again, you don't have to believe in Jesus. But I care about your soul. I believe you have one, whether you know you follow Jesus or not. So I care about how you feel about your experiences here. So if you have a negative experience, I want to know. If you have a negative interaction with the guest. If you have a negative interaction with a staff member. <laughs> Okay, if you have a negative interaction with me, maybe don't talk to me. Maybe go talk to, well, first me, but then you can talk to my boss. Um, because we want your experiences to be positive here. Your experience matters. Because, like I said at the beginning, you guys are literally my heroes. That you chose to spend this time tonight here. When you could be literally anywhere else. I don't take it for granted, and I am deeply appreciative. So, thank you. Thank you for your time. Um, we have skimmed the tour. Um, I will do a pointing tour. <laughs> Administration building, where people eat and people administrate. <laughs> Case manager's offices are in there, so that's where the appointments happen. We have a, a chaplain whose office is down there as well. She also um, is not currently a licensed therapist. She was licensed in Indiana, but apparently California is a real bear to get your license. <laughs> so 
Uh, she doesn't do what a practicing licensed worker would do, but she provides pastoral counseling. Um, our program director lives in an apartment up there three nights a week. Her husband also works at the downtown campus, so they go everywhere. Um, our youth director lives on site there. Um, we do have a couple of staff who do live on site here. Um, this is Sycamore Lodge. Currently, our youth room is in this uh, lodge right here. So this is a two-floor dwelling complex. The one at Concord, where we started our night, is a one-floor. This is two year, two-floor. And then an awkward journey around there that we won't bother going to because there's no easy way back is a three-level complex. You can sort of see it through the trees, but it looks like more trees because they designed it so well. Um, that's a three-level complex. Um, there's a lot of life here. Oh, yeah, up here, uh, the road that goes here. Oh, and by the way, I just wanted to point out, too, I don't know if most of you won't be able to see, but you know the fires? We are in a fire zone, so when you come in, you have to sign in at the at front desk. There's a volunteer sign-in book. That is for your safety, because this is a fire zone. Mm. And we have had to evacuate three times. The only way we can know you are safely evacuated is if you have recorded that you're here. So you'll see the mesh units over there. Those are there for uh, visual protection because, again, this is supposed to be an undisclosed location, so people aren't supposed to be able to see it. <laughs> Our perimeter was completely surrounded by fire. So the fire is a year and a half ago. Mm. So that we are still in our existence is kind of a miracle. Um, and that's just an important safety practice that when you come here, sign in so that we know if you need to evacuate, you are part of the crew that goes. Um, continuing up the road here, to the right is a cute little cottage. Looks like a little English cottage. That's my office. Come visit me. Um, it's just sweet and tiny. And then across the street from me is the operations department. That's maintenance. So the people who make sure everything here runs. <laughs> it's a lot of work. <laughs> They're the ones who fix the roofs, they're fixing the air conditioning that's having a problem. They do everything and their work orders are massive and large and they could really use expertise help. Um, that's the maintenance department. Oh yeah, we also have a, one landscaper, I told you guys that, for the three acres. Crazy. So anybody who loves gardening, come help. Thanks. Um, and then Sequoia Lodge is up farther. Uh, before Sequoia, after operations, if you just turn left and just go scoot up a little bit, you're going to find our in-kind, gifts in-kind department. That is uh, where you can bring donations. If you have new um, toys, uh, if you have gently used toys, if you have gently used clothing, um, gently used furniture, nothing with bugs or anything, obviously, um, you can bring it and security will either have you unload right there at the security or direct you up there if our gifts and kind department is okay. All right. That is the end. I thank you so much for your time, you guys. I have no idea what time it is because I left my watch. 7.20. 7.20! I, I, my goal was to start Seven. stop before 7.30. So, mm -hmm. yay! So, um, again, thank you. You guys are appreciated. Um, as long as you've checked your name off on the list, mm -hmm. I will be able to switch your uh, name over to attended orientation, and uh, then you're good to go. I do have a few of my business cards here, um, but is anybody interested in having one of my business cards? Okay. So this is. Uh, a great way to reach me. Hands up again. I uh, uh, From where on the website? I am not personally on the website. Um, you can send an email to, you can click on the volunteer link uh, under get involved, click on the volunteer link and you can click on volunteer at urm.org. Everybody in our department gets that. If you want to specifically talk about Hope Gardens or Shirley, or to me, say, hi, Shirley, it was great to blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's the easier way. 
but my that goes directly to me and I'm the only one who sees that email um, so yeah looking forward to seeing how this is gonna bubble up for all of you all it's um, a lot of fun here it feels like summer camp yeah. You know, more than anything else, I, I pinch myself that this is where I get to serve every day. Um, but yeah, you'll love it. And um, yeah, so grateful. So, thanks for coming. Thank you. you. And you